Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and more. Today I am back with a roundup, another roundup, I'm feeling the roundups, of the Jones Road beauty products that I filmed a first impressions of, let's say a couple weeks ago, but time is elusive these days. I know I filmed the first impressions, I'll just post the reviews back on the site, but today I thought let's do a full roundup so you guys can see everything right here. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Here we go. Okay, like I mentioned, I'm going to be talking through the products that I purchased from Jones Road Beauty. No one's paying me to say any of the following. You're getting my honest reviews, and I'm going to go product by product, high level information covering things that I think you might want to know before you buy these products. Also, I'm going to include my final verdict. That's the personal part. If I like it doesn't mean you're gonna like it and vice versa. Real quick before I dive in, if you're liking these roundups and you want to see more of them, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It takes two seconds and it really, really, really makes a huge difference. Really. Links to the full scorecard reviews are gonna be back on the site. Let's kick it off with the most um, talked about product that I tried and that is the Miracle Balm. I have a full review for this. The Miracle Balm, $38, four shades available. I have it in the dusty rose color because a lot of the other ones were sold out when I was trying to buy it, so congratulations, Bobby Brown. Things you might wanna know about this balm. It, for me, has been best utilized as a moisturizing base. Put a little bit on my fingers, I put it on. I do not see a big pop of color. It is very much a wash. I'm not using this for color, but I do like it for a moisturizing base here and there. There is a lot of product in my other review. I said, hey, can we put this in a tin container and maybe like cut it in half? Because I don't know how I'm gonna use all this product. But anyway, I digress. It's in plastic. I'm really not a fan of that. Application wise, very easy to press into the skin. You break the seal, you warm it up between your fingers, and you press and you press and you press. There's a ton of of content back on that website, tips from Bobby herself. Very, very helpful to watch and I think it was very intelligent of them to do that because kind of don't know what to do with the balm and the face pencils and I mean, you know, but it helps to hear from the expert. Pressing it into the skin, very easy. The touch test, I do feel this throughout the day. Some days, I don't mind that. Some days my skin is thirsty. It wants the extra moisture. Other days, not so much. It really depends on what kind of finish and touch you like. Do you want to know what's there? Do you want to feel it? Do you not? It's up to like you. It gives a moisturized glow. This is not shimmery or luminizing in that sense, in my opinion, because you're putting something on there. Like if you were going to take a balm and you put it on your face, even if it's not this balm, you would see a glow from moisture. Let's be honest, like that's what you're gonna now, see. The ingredients here are really lovely. There's a lot of like nourishing oils. You can smell the ginger. I feel like you can smell the ginger a little bit more than any other scent. I like that, but if you're averse to smelling things, then you're gonna kind of want to think twice about that. And those are kind of the key things that you want to know here. This is more of a wash, but the other colors may prove to be a bit more impactful in that respect. The bronze is one I'm kind of interested in, but do I want another tub of this? Probably not. So my final verdict, the personal call here. Again, everyone's different. My word is not gospel, okay? Let's just, how many times can I say that? Would I buy it again? I personally would not buy this again. It's not that I don't like it. I just don't like feeling the product on my face. I also really, I, it's gonna take me forever to get through this, and I'm not really a huge fan of the plastic packaging. Pass for me, but if you liked anything I just mentioned, then you might want to check it out. The next is the eyeliner. I have this in navy. This is called the Best Pencil. It's a lofty goal. Is it the best pencil? I'll tell you. Here are the things you want to know about the pencil. I mean, obviously it's navy, but it is pigmented. The claim here is that it's supposed to be dense color. I did see that. I like it. I love this as an alternate shade to black. I've been leaning on brown. This is pretty fun. That's all I'm gonna say. Glide it on, no pulling. You were kind of able to layer it up, which you'll see in the demo. There was a payoff, but it wasn't just hard to control in any way. I felt like it was also incredibly versatile, which the brand does mention on the product page. You can smudge it, you can tight line, I tight lined with it. You can get more graphic and precise with your liner, which is kind of a hot thing right now if you're on TikTok and you know that. And you can do a lot of things, so yes, it's versatile. In terms of staying power, which is a big question for me and probably for you for eyeliner, this held up pretty well. It depended on whether or not I set around the eye with a really light powder. I don't do it just on my eye, it's all over the face. If I did that, it lasted a little bit. You could put a little shadow and press it on top to keep it longer. But it did not slide off. The tight line really just transferred for me. I have watery eyes because of allergies, so pretty much anything's gonna do that. Let's just 
Let's just like come to reality there. Overall, I think it did a pretty good job for sticking around. Verdict, personal, would I buy it again? Yes, I would. I actually really love this eyeliner. I'm really reaching for it a lot and I can't wait to try other colors. The gloss, this is the cool gloss. I have this in boysen, is it boysenberry? Maybe it's a blackberry? It is, it's boysenberry. Ingredients, says natural flavor, kind of bummed me out. Sent a lot of messages, emails, DMs, finally heard back on Instagram. Really shouldn't be that hard to hear back, but uh, just saying. The natural flavor in there is peppermint oil and to reference the site. Now on the site you see peppermint oil listed in one of like the benefits or the nicer ingredients. And the ingredients list, it says natural flavor. So dear Jones Road Beauty, put it in the ingredients list. But for now, the brand said peppermint oil, so that's what we're gonna go with. This is a high shine gloss as stated on the product page. It's not heavy, it's not sticky, it's not tacky. I absolutely loved this color. This was beautiful on its own. It was beautiful on top of a lipstick. It is a beautiful color and the payoff was very strong for a glossy gloss. However, the moisture that I felt on the pout on my lips was really gone, I would say within a couple of hours. Color still stuck around the outer edge, which not always a good look, but it was still there. The moisture left and that was kind of sad. What happened when I first applied is, you know when you can feel it in the back of your throat and you kind of cough a little bit? I was doing a little bit of that. Plus the other thing I noticed, because I tried these things for a few days, after a while, my lips started feeling drier. Sometimes I wear glosses or balms and they actually end up drying my lips out, which I've experienced before. Don't know what that means in terms of the ingredients. It was really sad because like I said, I loved the color. Final verdict on this one, would I buy it again? No, because it made me cough and because my lips felt drier than before I started using it, so. This is the Sparkle Wash, sort of an eye wash shadow. You can use it as a multitasker in the spirit of the brand. Pretty much everything here can be used as a multitasker, which I kind of love. There are five shades available, it is $24. I have this in the shade Midas. When I look on the site, and this was kind of a knit, but when I looked on the site, Midas looked not like this. So I found that a couple of times with things that I purchased from the website. Product photography was a little bit misleading for me. This reads more pale gold in my hands now that I've used it. On the site, it looks like it's a little bit more warm. There's more of a champagne hue to it, so like a warmy, Champagne, I kind of like that. I was kind of going for that, but I got pale gold instead. Things you might want to know here, it does give a sheer wash. The term wash does apply. You can put more on. It tends to start scooting the formula around a little bit on the eye. You gotta wait a little second, put it more on, dab it in. I tried just putting this on the top lid and I tried putting it all over the eye. The one that surprised me there was I actually liked putting it all over the eye because it is so sheer. It wasn't opaque and it did give a luminosity. Now speaking of the luminous part of this, there are very, very fine flecks of what looks like glitter. I don't know if it's technically glitter, but it looks like it. So if you are anti-glitter, and I know there are a lot of us out there, then this might irritate you to a degree. It's very fine, but you can still kind of see the flex. So. I did find it lightweight. By the end of the day, it really looked nice on the eye. I put shadow over it to just kind of create some depth and dimension. However, by the end of the day, I <laughs> Boop, boop, boop. I saw many little flecks of baby mini glitter all over my face. So that was a bummer. Primer might help. Eye primer might help there. Um, or I could just tap it in because it's supposed to be a highlighter, but mm, wasn't as impressed with the wear test. Final verdict here, personal part, would I buy it again? I would not. I have yet to find a liquid eyeshadow that I really, really, really love because it fell off onto the face and I'm not really a big glitter person. I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe I got it wrong, maybe not, but at the end of the day, this is not something I would repurchase. Also, it's plastic. Everything's plastic. The next, the mascara, y'all, is in pitch black. It's $26, and what you might want to know about it. It has a big, fluffy brush, curved, fluffy brush. It's a thicker formula. It's not very wet, but it's not drying, so I would say right in the middle there. First time I used it, it was okay. You can't really judge a mascara. You have to give it a couple of pumps before you can really judge the mascara. Got a little bit more oxygen. It ended up getting a little clumpy. Formula got a little clumpy for me, but I was able to swipe it on and kind of swipe through the clumps. I like a fluffier brush. 
not too big. Some of the brushes right now are just really big and clunky. This was borderline that for me, but brushes tend to be very personal, so I'm not gonna harp on that. If you know mascara and you use it all the time, then you already know which kind of brush you like. We all do. Like, shout out your favorite mascara brush below because I would love to know. Overall, I feel like this deposited across the full lash. Sometimes it just sits on the bottom, sometimes it's just a lengthener and separator, but this really did deposit throughout the lash and I saw volume, so it wasn't a big feathery volume. It wasn't like a hugely impactful volume for me, but I did like the fact that I could see it from the base of the lash line to the tip of the lash. And I feel like it did lift and I learned a trick to just press your fingers to your lashes. I learned that from the website to help that curl and that lift. Lift here is what stood out the most for me. Not so much curl, but it just sort of like flicks up. You know what I mean? It says it's supposed to be flexible and hydrating. I feel like I have it on now. My lashes feel a little bit more stiff. It's not like I can't touch them. There is a very definite feeling that you have when you have a really hydrating, flexible formula. This is not giving me that. It's okay, I just prefer something that is a little more softer to the touch. And it lasted like a champ. I saw no flaking. I didn't see a lot of transfer. I really saw very, I don't think I saw transfer. Maybe just one time when I was trying this on way too early in the morning and like my lids were puffy or something. It stuck around all day, no flaking, really good job there. Now it's time for my final verdict. Would I buy this again? I have to be honest, I really like this mascara. I have nothing against this mascara. I'm just missing the, uh, oh yeah, this is a good one for what I like in a mascara. So that's kind of a TBD. I'm not sure. The last products that I want to talk about are the face pencils. So this really is in line with the balm. It's like a different way of looking at concealer and foundation. And you're an artist. You're putting stuff on your face. So crazy. They recommend that you get two different types. One that's a little lighter, different areas of your face, right? Brightening. Maybe you want to concealer under eye. You don't want to carry that across the full face. So you have a little darker shade for the rest of the face. I have O2 and O7 and I'm telling you I lean way more on O7. O2 was bought to be a lighter shade, a lighting shade, a concealing shade. It just didn't work for my skin. It looked a little flat um, but the 7 shade I at first was very precious with and then I had face oil on and that let that kind of sink in. SPF let it sink in. Whatever you prep let it sink in. And then I was, you know, drawn all, I was really, I was drawn all over my face. And then I would press it in, it takes a minute. You have to like find your own groove and your own routine with this line. Some people love that. There's a learning curve. Some of us don't want a product with a learning curve. Let's just put it out there. So I respect it, but to each his own, right? Still, press it in and you saw some, I saw some really nice coverage, some spot treatment, very simple to do here. The spot treatment was actually the better of the two because I pulled out my magnification mirror. <sighs> it looked great, but then when I went up close or in natural light, it was sitting a little bit on top. I tried, you guys know I try multiple methods of application. Um, however, the coverage did look good. You could see a difference in coverage and it was incredibly lightweight. So if you're looking for something that you can just kind of like swipe on, you're gonna have to take a second to press it in. That's the one thing. Do you want it to be lighter weight and if it can sink into your skin, which a lot of people said it did, it's just not for me, then you might really, really like these pencils. From far away, I was like, this is, this is great. This could be a winner, but up close. It wasn't one of the worst I've seen. It wasn't one of the feathering, it just, just so slightly, just didn't, you know, if I had a friend looking at me, they would know. Give me a second, sorry, you're gonna hear air conditioning. So final verdict on this, would I buy it again? No, I wouldn't because it kind of felt flat. The finish wasn't really living up to the hype. Yeah, I mean, I like playing with them, but it's really better for spot treatment and I have concealers that give me better spot treatment. That's it. That's the end. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but there you have it. That is the full roundup of all of the Jones Road Beauty products I've tried. What have you tried from the line? What do you love about the line? What do you not like about the line? I love the website and what they're doing. I see the approach. I see it and I appreciate it. Certain products won me over and certain products didn't. Overall though, is it quite there for me? And I don't know why, but that's my honest opinion. There you go. Hope you enjoyed this one and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I will be right back here real soon with some more information and until then, 